Okay, working with uh, Illustrator to uh, trace photograph can be done two different ways. We're going to uh, start with the uh, auto uh, trace function called live trace. So I'm going to place a picture here that I have that I've been uh, practicing with, and uh, you guys might might know this well. Um, your picture might be really really big. Mine actually fits the artboard pretty well. Now, depending on which picture you choose, I would say that uh, if it's got strong light, if it's got high contrast, if it's got uh, a close-up view, that those are probably the better type of pictures to use. When I bring in an image uh, into uh, Illustrator, it immediately uh, uh, changes the options up here at the top, and one of them is called image trace. Uh, Illustrator uh, refers to it as a live trace. And I'm just going to click right here. And immediately uh, it jumps to the default, which is a black and white. Now, this is not, this is, as I go to outline view, you can see it's not a path oriented object, but it does already kind of look like it. Um, what they're what the uh, software is waiting for here is for us to maybe use this or change our mind. If you use it, you touch expand, and then the paths become available. I'm going to undo that because there's some other great options over here. There are some preset options that are kind of interesting. I'm using a black and white picture. You can also use a color for this. But in the black and white, it renders it in different t uh, tones of gray. You can see that kind of looks okay. And if I touch expand. Now I've got my paths that I can edit and move and select and all the other uh, things that we do with uh, vector images, right? Okay, so I'm just going to undo and go back to our preview. Again, that's a preview. Looks like the finished thing, but it's not. It, it hasn't assigned the vector shapes. And the drop downs give you other options. Six color. And you can see it looking more and more like a picture. And there's a 16 color. And it kind of gets to a point where it almost looks exactly like the photograph. In fact, you can keep adding colors here until you really wouldn't be able to tell much difference between the illustration and the uh, and the final uh, and, the, and the original photograph. So I always try to lean towards making it look distinctly like a drawing. Okay, now other than those presets, which there's some others here that are kind of interesting, there's a one called Line Art. Okay, <laughs> didn't do much. Uh, sketched Art, kind of looks like the original. And some others here too. Now they have a high fidelity, which will make it look almost like the original. You can see it takes a little longer to process as well. That almost looks like a photograph, uh, but you can, if you look close, you can see that it is dividing up the areas into tone. Okay, so how to decide really what you want to do here? If you go to this little button, you get the same, you get the same presets. They're all right here, and you can see them uh, working there again. Uh, you can uh, also be very specific with the number of colors. Instead of choosing between three and six and sixteen, you can uh, you can change with the slider, and it'll reprocess each time. <clears throat> and you can see it kind of going to a little bit more detail. Actually, five or six colors actually works pretty good on mine. They also have the uh, the uh, presets up here. Let's see what they do. There's 16. Again, mine's black and white. Uh, Grayscale is not going to do much. Black and white is going to kind of go back to what we had before. Okay, I'm going to go um, over here. I think I'm going to set it. I really liked the... Uh, really like the six colors because I get just enough definition in the eyes here and it still looks kind of like a drawing or a 
high contrast painting. Once you decide on which one you like, then just touch the expand button here, and again, it turns it into vectors. Now this little drop down window that we that popped up, you can put it over in your you can put it over here if you like. Or you can just throw it away. You can just dismiss it. Remember you can you can also just touch there and they go away. Okay, so now I've got a vector image here. If I deselect you can see what it's what I'm working on here. Okay. Just a few things that we uh, can do with this um, is uh, you can select individual colors. Use the white arrow here because if you look in your layers panel, this is a group. And so you can either ungroup it or you can just use the white arrow, which is kind of the way I prefer to do it. So let's say I pick this color uh, with the white arrow and then use the select same function, same fill color. Now everything that is that fill color has been selected. That means that I can change that to a different color, right? Okay, and they all change. All of the ones that are that started off as the light gray have now changed to yellow. Don't forget your color guide over here. It does some really nice uh, changes like that. Okay, and that actually looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Okay, I'll select this one and go to select same fill color. And um, it's kind of hard sometimes to see these changes uh, very well when you've got um, when you've got all those anchor points showing. Remember, you can use Command H. I'll press Command H. Now it looks like it's not selected, but it is still. It is still selected, and you can make maybe better choices as to which colors you want to use there. Remember, dozens of options here. You don't have to just be stuck with uh, with the ones that that came up. There's a bunch that you can do. And some of them are really quite amazing how they can change this black and white image into something actually pretty pretty neat. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn my anchors back on here and maybe undo. I like that one I think maybe the best. Okay, so you can do that with your with your auto trace. Um, you can also uh, delete objects if you don't want particular ones. You can get rid of them. Click on the fill, even though it's a uh, even though it's a uh, white arrow that we're using. Remember, with the with the white arrow, you can still uh, you can still delete objects. Sometimes you have to click twice. Okay. Um, for mine, it's a, as it's worked out. It's pretty neat uh, that I can that I can delete all those background uh, uh, shapes if I want to. It really depends on the picture. But I can also like switch switch to draw behind and maybe pick a new color and draw a rectangle in back here. Change my background just as easy as that. Go to my gradient. Remember gradients are easy to to change, make sure your fill color is forward for this. Drag it in, and now I've got. <laughs> I thought I did. Now I've got a gradient that includes that color in the background. That's kind of neat. Okay, remember you can change the uh, colors that are in your gradient if you like. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> Let's try that again. I'm going to change my black to brown. Wow, that looks pretty good. Could be a radial gradient. Wow, that looks pretty good too. Okay, so there's lots of uh, things you can do there. Remember, with the annotator, you can change your you can change your gradients. Okay, I'm using the radial gradient here. Looks pretty nice with the highlight in the background. Okay, and there's then so many other things you can also do if you if you want. You can uh, remember white arrow is better. You can smooth shapes with the uh, smooth tool. Sometimes when you do this, they open up little cracks in between the colors. See that? You got to be careful with that. It's pretty easy to fix. You can just select individual anchor points and cover them back up. Okay. Um, you can. Uh, you can select the whole thing, and 
and use some of the options that we have over here under Object, Path, and Simplify. Simplify is really a fun thing to do. Um, just checking my time here. Okay, uh, I like uh, playing with this uh, Simplify. Now again, it, it might be better to turn off the uh, turn off the selection before you do that. Wow, look at that crazy thing. Okay, I want to undo that, and I want to use Command H this time. So Command H. Remember, it's still selected. Go to Object Path and Simplify. Try maybe all straight lines. It's kind of fun. Remember, you can change the uh, you can change the kind of the threshold there. It's called threshold. Gives you a few more options as far as changing the angles of stuff. Part of what's happening here is that the, the, the little cracks are opening up and my background color is showing. See what I mean? There's some, some of that pink color is coming from the background. Okay, and there are some of these that actually work very well. I mean, my, my uh, image, you can still do a likeness. What I mean is a lot of people would still be able to guess who this is. In spite of the fact that it looks quite a bit different from the picture. Okay, I'm just doing undo and redo. Okay, okay so that's uh, auto trace in a nutshell. You ought to maybe uh, continue to practice with that. We did, uh, got a couple minutes here left. We did talk about removing the uh, edges that are outside of your bleed. You can do that with a straight line. I'm just using line segment. I'm going to drag it across. Use the shift key to make sure it stays really straight. Hmm, doesn't seem to be adding anything. Let me just do it with the with that. Okay, so now I've uh, drawn a line segment. I'll object, path, and divide objects below. Got to turn my anchor points on so I can see them. And then by carefully selecting the ones that were on this, you know, that were below the line, you can actually get rid of any over uh, anything that goes outside of the outside of the. Uh, bleed line there. So I'm going to do it this way again. Object, Path, Divide Objects Below, and then back to the white arrow and just select the pieces that are just to the right now. And you can even up your edges and make it look really uh, nice that way. I'll do one more up here. Object, Path, Divide Objects Below, white arrow, and I'll get rid of the top there that's not supposed to be showing. Okay, I better stop before I run out of time. But that's the uh, thing we, that's the uh, function in Illustrator we call uh, Live Trace.